Hello everyone. Um, oh, it's amazing that so many people have come to hear something about my project, but I think I'm really keen also to talk to you afterwards and after I've explained a little bit and, and we can all learn from each other. And I'm very open to having um, contributions and ideas flowing around what I'm going to talk about. So um, do get your questions and comments ready. <laughs> um, so a bit about me. And my name's Sue Conker. For some reason, I can't I normally can change my name on 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 the Zoom, but it hasn't worked. So, um, my name, my yeah, my name is Sue Conker, and um, I live in Ipswich. Um, I live with uh, my dog and my partner, and I have a camper van, and I like going cold swimming in my spare time. Um, so that's a bit about me. Um, I think what I'm going to talk to you today about is it's a bit about participatory action research. But it's it's more about the journey that I've taken to actually choosing this as a method, um, and the the actual research hasn't started yet. So I've just received um, full NHS ethics for the study, and um, it, it, it's about to be a process um, beginning soon and and going all the way through until October. Um, so I guess for me the the story started. Um, um, for me, I, I I I guess when I was younger, I had um, quite a lot of experience in, in social care as a child and, and, and probation and other public services needing to support our family. And, and ever since then, I've really had a passion for being involved and, and improving things um, for the future generations of, of having to use um, services such as children's social care. Um, and I've got a very inspiring older brother who um, has sort of paved the way for me a bit because he's he's got learning disabilities and he's visually and, and hearing impaired and he does some fantastic co-production work around accessible and inclusive language and communication so he's he's really been a driver for me um one of my first jobs was in uh, the youth offending service and and I was asked to produce an a service user involvement policy and this is where I really found out about the sort of practical the practical things that we need to think about when writing these sort of strategies and I was I was very inexperienced at that point so I learned a lot for, for sort of my future development through that project um, and then I then took up a job at Health Watch Suffolk uh, with the word co-production and I was a co-production facilitator. Um, and I think this is where my passions really lie is having people, real people with lived experience involved in designing health and care services. Um, so through my role at Health Watch, um, I lead a team of 11 ambassadors and I support them to bring their lived experience to different projects and design and, and sort of transformation. Um, so not really the research side of things. So it's only very recently that I've got into research because I had the opportunity to start a PhD at the University of Suffolk. Um, and my, my topic is uh, co-production within integrated care. Um, and this all started, uh, the, the idea for it started just as the Health and Care Act was, was kind of really being spoken about in, in 2021 before it, before it became legislation. Um, and the, uh, the, the idea for my PhD is to um, support uh, integrated care systems to really use co-production um, in its truest sense to, to design services and transform them into what they, they now need to become, which is, as, as we know, very different to probably how they've been provided um, until now. Um, yeah, so that's really a background on me. And uh, I do have some slides to share if that's okay. And, and hopefully this story won't take us too far over the 15 minutes, but I apologize if it does, because it's still quite complicated from my point of view, this, this study. So. Um, hopefully you'll be able to uh, see the slides. Let me know if, if you can see them and not. Yeah, uh, we can see them too. Thing. That's lovely. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, oh gosh, sorry. Oh. Error. And then I want to. It's not letting me. Um, sorry, it's not letting me see anything else at the moment. And I'll press that. Okay, sorry about that. So yeah, I'd like to introduce you very firstly to my um, co-production advisory group. So for my PhD, I really wanted to involve people right from the beginning as part of my ethos, practicing what I'm preaching. Um, so I, I uh, 
recruited a group of uh, people from the Suffolk and North East Essex integrated care system. And these wonderful people represent uh, service users and unpaid carers and members of staff who uh, bring their lived experience to the research and they've supported me throughout. And what was really important for me was, um, was to have them help me decide on the methods. And this is how participatory action research has kind of come about. So my PhD is split into three different work streams and I'm answering the question, how can co-production impact design and transformation within integrated care? And so what I'm talking to you about today is the second work stream of the PhD, which is um, a multi-case study. And uh, the aim of that study is to explore examples of ongoing co-production within integrated care across Suffolk and North East Essex. So I'll just quickly cover what I mean by a lot of these words, if some of you might be new to them, um, because part of the a very important part of working with the advisory group was to figure out what on earth we were talking about when we say some of these words. Um, so integrated care, co-production and design and transformation. So there are lots of definitions of these concepts out there, as we all know. Um, so I'm just going to go through what some of the definitions mean uh, specifically for this study. And it helped us to um, have an inclusion and exclusion criteria as well. So integrated care, when health and care services work together to coordinate and collaborate for service users to receive more efficient and effective provision for their health and care needs. Co-production in this instance means a process whereby people, including service users and unpaid carers, become actively involved and influence the decisions that design and transform health and care services. And finally, design and transformation. So design is the act of developing new service processes within integrated care and transformation is the implementation and outcome of those changes. So I met with my co-production advisory group and we looked at the, the aim. So we, look, we, look, sorry, uh, we looked at what we were trying to aim for as part of these case studies and we discussed who are our participants of these case studies going to be? How are you going to how how are you going to really measure exactly what is going on in Suffolk and North East Essex and in terms of co-production? Um, and this was a really important question that my co-production advisory group people asked. And 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 someone said it all depends on who you ask and what's the validity to what they're saying. You need to ask the actual people. And by that, they meant the people on the ground who were bringing their lived experience and really thinking about in research how they felt, uh, how they feel during co-production processes. Are they truly involved? At what level on that sort of ladder of participation are they, are they feeling? Um, and then similarly, it would be really important to ask members of staff who are, who are involved in co-production and leaders of projects as well. So that was our first question. Our second question that came up was, so what's the value of those taking uh, for those taking part? Because as we know, co-production can be an add-on to an already really stretched process of creating changes and designing and transforming services. And so if we go in there and, and kind of um, see, see what's going on by observing as part of a case study, we were, we were probably thinking, that we'll see a lot of the same things as what we know is going on already, that people are struggling to involve people, that, that, that the principles of co-production can be um, a challenge to really uphold throughout the process of, of a design. Um, and we might be we might well be looking at case studies of, of consultations or more like um, involvement in, and engagement rather than true co-production. So it was really felt from the group that this process could be support, this research process could be a supporter to ongoing co-production. And this is where the idea of participatory action research came in. So that uh, myself as a, as a researcher can work together as equals with the people who are doing co-production already um, and to, to discuss the process as it's going, to, to support them to progress it along in, in, in a way that they feel is, is more true co-production. So it's a, a real value for everybody's time rather than uh, research being an, an add-on and, and something extra to fit on into, into people's very busy schedules. Um, 
So we'd really like the study to be an exploratory learning process for everyone involved. And we thought that if we studied this as a, as a case study, as more of an observer, people probably wouldn't learn very much new. And, and we were wondering what would be really exciting to come out of this study saying that um, the research was really part of the changes. So that's where the idea of participatory action research came in. So I will now explain what participatory action research is. So it's often uh, abbreviated to PAR. So it's um, a, a participatory democratic process and it brings together action and reflection together. And it's a very interactive research approach that encourages joint learning and decision-making together between the participants and the researchers throughout that process. It focuses on empowerment and it's an education to all. Um, and the very final point on that slide is the word co-researchers. So the idea for the study is that I become a co-researcher alongside service users, carers, members of staff and co-production leads of NHS or, or care services. Um, we were able to produce the um, studies material, so the recruitment materials, we co-designed those together as a co-production advisory group. We were able to put a lot of these into Easy Read as well, so we have um, diff different versions of these materials ready to go. Um, and then the wonderful process of NHS ethics started as, as anyone doing a PhD, as anyone uh, here doing a PhD had to go through a full NHS um, wreck then uh, you'll know how I was feeling for the last <laughs> best part of six months um, but we have finally got through and uh, the, N the NHS has now approved the study um, and we're at the recruitment stage now so you can imagine um, that there are, there is quite a complex process for this recruitment stage there are two parts of it so one for the case studies themselves and then the next stage of that recruitment will be for the co-researchers so I think it's my final slide now which will explain a little bit more about I'll just let's get that slide a bit a bit more about the study so this, sorry this is a bit of a wordy slide um, but the name of the study is um, a multi-case study exploring ongoing co-production within integrated care across Suffolk and North East Essex. Um, we are going to recruit three case studies so a case study will be a service or an organisation who is employing a co-production approach over the next um, eight months. Um, so we're at the stage now where services and organizations have expressed their interest. And myself and the advisory group have been going through lots of, we actually had nine um, case studies already who have expressed their interest. And we're going to select three of those case studies to become, um, to become groups that then become co-researchers uh, co with me. So um, you can imagine it's going to be three case studies all, uh, going along all the way until um, all, um, October this year. So I will be part of three different co-researcher groups. And as you can see on the slide, there'll be um, myself as the researcher, three service users or carers, one members of, member of staff and two co-production or, or service leads. And we will work together. Um, over that time. So there'll be an ongoing co-production process as it would already be happening. It's already happening. And the research process then sits alongside that as a case study. So I'll now go back a slide because I must have put those in the wrong order as my final slide. Um, and this just shows us the research question. So this is what we're going to be looking at together as co-researchers. Um, so we'll be looking at what is happening here, what's happening at the moment, how, how is information um, being gathered, how is co-production working, what are the processes. Uh, we'll be looking at why are things as they are, so we'll be exploring who's involved, how are they involved, um, we'll be in, in, interpreting the information that's kind of happening as, as it happens. Um, this takes us to the next question, which is how can we do things differently? So they will be reflecting on their processes um, and they will be um, speaking together as, as a co-researcher group to think about how things can be slightly tweaked, perhaps, um, for the future of the programme. And then finally, evaluating. So how will we know 
um, things have changed. Um, and at that point, I think we'll be so immersed in the research together that that, that step will probably come quite naturally to, to us all as we, as we go through the, the six months. And in terms of the, the data that I'll be collecting, it will mainly be the co-researcher meetings. I will record those and, and I will transcribe those and they will become our data for a multi-case analysis. And I won't go into any more detail about it because I appreciate how complicated that sounded. <laughs> and I'm really pleased that I was able to explain it to you um, today. And hopefully it made some sort of sense. And I'm very happy to have questions um, and comments. And because it hasn't started fully, um, we're just at that recruitment stage, any tips <laughs> as well. So thank you for listening. <laughs>